Hello students, 13.2 is on arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence with a pattern of addition by a constant number, which is called the common difference, to move from term to term. For the sequence below, determine 1, the common difference, 2, an explicit formula, 3, a recursive formula, 4, the tenth term, and 5, the sum of the first 10 terms. Then generalize your results. So the sequence begins with negative 7, then goes to negative 2, then to 3, then to 8, then 13, then 18, etc. You can recognize a pattern of addition. To go from term to term, we are adding 5, and that's true between any two consecutive terms. In fact, if you take any two consecutive terms and do the one on the right minus the one on the left, you should get this common 5. This is why we call it a common difference. 18 minus 13 is 5. 13 minus 8 is 5, 8 minus 3 is 5, and 3 minus negative 2 is 5, and negative 2 minus 7 is 5. So our first question was to find that common difference, and we're going to use D to stand for the common difference, and it's going to be 5. It's the number that you're adding to go from term to term from left to right. Number 2 is to find an explicit formula. Well, this sequence starts at negative 7, and it adds 5 every time. So it's a linear relationship between n and the term of the sequence. And the slope would be 5. So we can start with the 5n, and then ask ourselves, what needs to be added right here so that when I plug in n equals 1, I get negative 7? Well, if you plug in n equals 1 right here, you get 5. And so what do you have to add to 5 to get negative 7? And the answer to that is negative 12. So let's test this out. If you plug in 1, you do get negative 7. Plug in 2 now. This would be 2 times 5 is 10 minus 12, and you do get negative 2. Plug in 3. 3 times 5 is 15, minus 12 is 3. And it will work for all of the others. Now, a recursive formula here is simply expressing a sub n in terms of previous terms. And so this one is pretty simple. To find a sub n, to find any term, for example, to find the 13, you take the one before it, and you add 5. So the one before a sub n is a sub n minus 1. And then to that, you add 5. And then when you give a recursive definition, you do have to give enough of the initial terms to get this started. So the first term is negative 7. So combined, if we know the first term is negative 7, and then we know this pattern, to go from term to term you add 5, then we can produce the rest of the sequence. Number 4 is to find the tenth term. And I'm going to use the explicit formula to do that. The explicit formula is nice because it allows you to jump around the sequence and find any term you want. If you want to use the recursive formula, then you're going to have to generate term by term until you get to the term that you're looking for. So I'm going to use the explicit formula and say a sub 10 is equal to 5 times 10 and then minus 12. And this should give me 50 minus 12, which is 38. That's the tenth term of the sequence. This could also be found by simply continuing the sequence, the sequence until we get to the tenth term. For example, the very next one, after add 5 to 18 would be 23. After that would be 28, then 33, and then 38. And count them out. We have 1, 2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and the tenth term is 38. If I had asked for the hundredth term, then you would certainly want to use the explicit formula and not write out 100 numbers. And lastly, find the sum of the first 10 terms. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So for number part five here, I'm going to do is I'm going to take this arithmetic sequence and add them together. So we have negative seven minus a two plus a three plus an eight plus a 13 plus an 18 plus a 23 plus a 28 plus a 33 and then finally plus a 38. Here are the 10 terms that we are trying to add together. Two of them are negative and the rest are all positive. Now, it turns out with arithmetic sequences, there's a clever way to go about doing this. If you add the first and last, you will get a certain number. 7, no, negative 7 plus 38 is 31. So I'll put that 31 right there. If you add the second and second to last, negative 2 plus 33 is also 31. If you add the third and third to last, we also get 31, 3 plus 28, etc. Notice how many 38s we can get. 8 plus 23 gives me, sorry, 31s we get. And then finally that last one there, 31. So pairing them off in this way, we recognize that we always get the, a consistent sum. And there are 10 numbers in this list. So it stands to reason that we can do a shortcut here. 
There were 10 numbers in the list, pair them off, so divide by 2, and then add simply the first and last. This seems like a satisfactory way to find the sum of the first 10 terms. And so this would give us 31 times 5. That's 155. I'll leave it to you to pull out a calculator and confirm this answer. Now we're going to general, generalize our results. So we have an arithmetic sequence here. The first term we're going to say is just a without a subscript. And then in this case, we add d to go from term to term. So we add d to a, we get a plus d as the second term. And then we add d again. If we have a plus d and I add another d, then we have a plus d plus d, which is a plus 2d. And if I add a d again, I get a plus 3d. Add d again, I get a plus 4d, etc. And keep in mind that a sub 1 is just the first term here. a sub 2 is a plus d. a sub 3 is a plus 2d. a plus 4 is a plus 3d. And a5 is a plus 4d. So it stands, we can see a pattern here where a sub n, notice that if you're on the fifth term, we have a general structure a plus some number times d. And that number in front of d is one number less than the number term that we're on. That's a consistent pattern. So a sub n would be equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. This becomes a, an explicit formula for us. Now a recursive formula would simply be a sub n is equal to the one before a sub n minus 1 and then add d where we say that the first term is just a. So here's our recursive formula given this general arithmetic sequence. Notice that I could have used this general formula over here in this case. Let's apply it. So revisiting the previous example, a sub n should be equal to the first term, which is negative 7, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which was 5. So that's applying this general formula to this specific case right here. The first term is the a, and the common difference is the, the 5. And then if you were to distribute this 5, we would get negative 7 plus 5n minus 5. And I'll combine the negative 7 and the minus 5 and notice that we get 5n minus 12, exactly confirming what we have here. Uh, the tenth term, we're not going to generalize. Well, we can do that. The tenth term over here would be, therefore, if I want to know the tenth term, and I'm going to use this explicit formula right there, then it would be equal to a plus 9 copies of the common difference. So a plus 9d. The coefficient of, the, of d should be one number less than the term we're looking for. And then the sum of the first 10 terms. Okay, so if I were to do a plus a plus d, etc., I'm not going to write them all down. The second to last term, the ninth term, would be a plus 8d, and then the tenth term would be a plus 9d. If you were to do the pattern that we see down below, the sum of these two terms, of these 10 terms would be the number of terms, which is 10, divided by 2. And then we would do the first term plus the last term. Or even more generally, we would say it's the number of terms divided by 2, because we pair them off. And then I would write, write it this way. Uh, the first term, which is a sub 1, plus the, the last term. In this case, a sub 10. Let's keep our work separated here. This was a generalization of 4, and here's a generalization of 5. And you can even go further. Instead of saying a sub 1 plus a sub 10, you could say simply first term plus last term. And this is a nice little trick you can do for adding up the terms of an arithmetic sequence. Now, it has to be an arithmetic sequence for you to use this shortcut. Other kinds of sequences don't have this pairing off phenomenon that, that occurs. OK, let's go to the next slide. An arithmetic sequence has the indicated terms. Find the 15th term and the sum of the first 15 terms. Okay, we're given the 7th term and the 13th term. And th there's going to be a total of 15 terms that we're interested in. Here's the first term, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and that's going to be an 8th, 9th, 10th, oops, I counted that wrong. This is the 8th term right there. So this is the 9th term, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And the 13th term, which is right here, was negative 4. And our question is to find the 15th term and then to whatever these terms are, add them all up. Which means I'm going to have to figure out what the first term is as well. So we got a couple of things to figure out. And 
Now, there's a, a variety of ways you can do this. One way is to recognize that to go from term to term, you add a common difference. So to go from 8 to negative 4, the 7th term to the 13th term, we go from 7 to 8 to 9 to 10 to 11 to 12 to 13. That's six steps. We added six copies of the common difference to 8 to get to negative 4. So here's one way that you might do this. We do 8 plus 6 copies of that common difference should take me to negative 4. That means 6 copies of the common difference should be equal to and subtract 8 from negative 4, and that gives me negative 12, and then divide by 6. We get the common difference is negative 2. We're removing 2 to go from term to term, or we're adding negative 2. And so this allows me to fill in the rest of this really quickly. Remove 2, remove 2, remove 2, remove 2, remove 2, and it, as predicted, we get right to negative 4. If I continue, I'll remove 2 to get negative 6, and then let's remove 2 more, and right there is our 15th term. This is our a sub 15. Right here is our a sub 13 that was given, and here is a sub 7 that was also given. You move that up there. Now going backwards in an arithmetic sequence is you subtract d to go from right to left. So if I subtract negative 2, then I'm going to be adding 2 to go from right to left. So if we continue that pattern, add 2 to, from 8 to get 10, add 2, add 2, add 2, add 2, and then we can get to the starting value by adding 2 more. So here are all the terms of this sequence, or at least the fifth, first 15 terms of this sequence. And now we, we want, we, what we want to do is to go about and find the sum of these first 15 terms. And here's where we get to add them off in pairs, first and last. So if we take the first and the last, 20 plus negative 8 is going to be 12. Do the second and second to last, 18 plus negative 6 is also 12, and you should see this pattern emerge. We should have a whole bunch of 12s. And then notice we have one copy of 6 that doesn't pair off with anything. So we really see that we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and a half seven and a half uh, copies of 12. And it should always be that the term that's right in the middle is exactly half of what the common uh, pairings add up to. They all add to a common 12, and the one left in the middle should be exactly half that always with an arithmetic sequence. So we can see that if we add the first and last and get 12, we need to do seven and a half copies of 12. So in this case here, we're going to do A1, Let's write it this way. Here's a1, 20, plus 18, etc., minus 6, minus 8. Here, this represents all the sum. I'm not writing every single thing, but... And we get... Our formula would su suggest we do the number of terms, which is 15 terms. Right, I'm harkening back to this identity right here. The number of terms divided by 2, so we pair them off, and then we just multiply that by the first term plus the last term. So we do 15 terms divided by 2, and then we add the first and last. 20 plus negative 8. Now, even though these don't pair off exactly because, because we have an odd number of terms, we get this 15 divided by 2 is 7 and a half. And that's exactly what we're seeing happen here. There's 7 12s and then a half of 12 right there, and we put them all together. So we can still use that formula even if we have an odd number of terms. And 20 minus 8 is 12, and 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 6 times 15 is 90. So we should get a sum of 90 when I add up all of these terms. Now you can also notice some other kinds of shortcuts here. If you were to add this collection of terms right there, notice that that would zero out. So in this particular case, if you were to add just these terms here, that should also confirm the 90. And uh, doing that, we have 30 plus 30 plus 30, grouping them in pairs. Yeah, we have 90 right there that's highlighted. And the rest of this all canceled each other. Now another way that we could have done this is the following. We could have used the explicit formula, uh, this formula right here, twice, and created a system whereby we solve for a and d. For example, we know that the general formula for a sub 7 is to do the first term, a, plus 6 copies of the common difference. And we know that that should give us 8. We also know that the formula for the 13th term will be the first term plus 12 copies of the common difference, and that should give me negative 4. What we can do is solve this system right here, this is a system that we can solve for a and d. That's another way to do this. And if we were to subtract the two equations, the a's would cancel. 
We get 60, I'm going to subtract the two equations. We get 60 minus 12d is negative 60. I'm going to do 8 minus negative 4. That's going to be 8 plus 4, which is 12. And that gives me d is negative 2. And then once I know d is negative 2, I can plug it into this equation right here and solve for a. If d is negative 2, then this will be negative 12, which I add to the 8 side, giving me 8. a is 20. So here's just an alternate way to figure out what d and a are by creating this a system of equations and solving for a and d. But once you know a and d, once you know that the first term is 20, and then we would have to figure out the 15th term. So a is 20 and d is negative 2, so then I would know that the 15th term is equal to the first term plus 14 copies of the common difference. So I would know that I could do 20 plus 14 times negative 2. That's going to be, that's going to give me negative 8 when I'm done. So that's the way I could then get negative 8. So this alternate approach for finding uh, the, the necessary terms are, keep in mind, I only knew the 7th term, the 13th term, and then I was able to get the 1st term and the 15th term. I didn't have to find all those other terms that were in between. I was able to find the explicit formula and then go straight to the 15th term. And also, I don't need all the ones in between because once I have an arithmetic sum, all I need to know are the first and last, and of course how many terms there are. So we do the number of terms, 15, divided by 2, pair them off. Even if that's odd, we still pair them off, and then we add only the first and last. So a whole bunch of these terms here we never needed to know. Okay, let's go to the last slide for this lesson. Find the indicated sums. So we have a sum from k equals 3 to 22 of 2k plus 1. If I were to write this out, we won't, we won't write out all of the terms, but we will write out some of them. Plug in k equals 3 first into here, and we get 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1, we get 7. Now plug in k equals 4, and we're going to get 9. Now plug in k equals 5, and we're going to get 11. You can quickly see a pattern. Now let's go to the second to last term. Let's plug in maybe the last three terms. Let's plug in 20 into this, and 2 times 20 plus 1 is 41. Now let's plug 21 into this, we're going to get 43. And then finally, let's plug in the final 22 goes into here, and we get a total of 45. And there's a whole bunch here in between that I didn't bother writing. But notice that this is arithmetic, because we are adding 2 to go from term to term. Furthermore, whenever you're working with a summation notation and the summand is a linear function of uh, whose variable is the index of summation, so in this case k. So this is a general form mk plus b, where m and b are known numbers. So 2k plus 1 is a linear function whose input is k. And whenever you have a linear input, you know that the resulting sum is going to be of an, corresponding to an arithmetic sequence. And that's true for general formulas as well. If we scroll back up here, Notice that our general formula here for this example was 5n minus 12. Well, that's a linear structure. It's an mn plus b structure, where n is the variable. Okay, so knowing that this is arithmetic, we just have to figure out how many terms there are. And to do that, let me move this over here a little bit. We need to, one way to do it is to do these trick where you do 22 minus 3 and then add 1. So 22 plus 1 is 23, then remove 3 is 20. So there are 20 terms here in this list. That means they're going to pair off nicely. They're going to pair off in tens. And if we do this trick where you add 7 and 45, that gives us 52. 9 and 43 gives us 52. 11 and 41 will give us 52. So we're going to get a whole bunch of 52s when I pair them off. And so we just need to do the number of terms, which is 20, divided by 2. So that's 10 pairs. And then add just the first and last. This is our basic pattern. So 7 plus 45 is 52, and there's 10 pairs of that, so we get 520 is our sum. Now we did, before we used any of this trick of adding or pairing them off in this way, we did have to verify that this was an arithmetic, uh, the sum, what corresponded to an arithmetic sequence. Now this next one, this one's obviously an arithmetic sequence. You can see the common difference is adding 3. The question I don't know is how many terms it takes to get to 97. And the first term is 7. So we could, there's a variety of ways we can figure out which number term this is. Uh, in other words, how many terms there are here. So let's say that the first one is our a1, and then we have our a2 and our a3, etc. 
And this one is a question mark. That's what we're trying to figure out, how many terms there are here. Well, we know that the first term is 7, and the common difference is 3. 3 is what we're adding. So we know that a sub n in general will be the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference of 3. So we have this general formula we can rely upon. And we can solve this. We can plug 97 in for a sub n and figure out what n is. So we can say, okay, 97 is equal to 7 plus n minus 1 times 3. Subtract the 7. We get 90 is equal to n minus 1 times 3. Divide by 3. We get 30 equals n minus 1. And then add 1. So we get 31 is the nth. So 97 is the 31st term. And since our count started at a sub 1, and then that means a sub 31 means that's the 31st number in this list. So we have 31 terms. So we formula is the number of terms, which is 31 terms. I'll write it this way. Divided by 2, pair them off. And even though this is an odd number, this will still work out. 31 is an odd number. Divided by 2, we'll pair them off. So we're going to have 15 and a half, effectively, uh, pairs. And add the first and last. So we do the first plus the last. And I didn't even have to know how many terms, all the terms that were present right here. All we had to know is how many terms there were and what the first one and the last one is, and that's it. And so 97 plus 7 is 104. So we get 31 halves times 104. And we're going to get 31 times 52. So I'm going to divide the 104 by 2 first. 31 times 52 is 1,612. So this will be the sum of these 31 terms. And then the last one is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, etc., up till n. So this time I'm keeping the ending term general. Notice that this is certainly arithmetic. And we can see that the common difference is 1, and the first term is 1. But clearly there are n terms here because the terms themselves count themselves off. So there's n terms. So according to the arithmetic sum formula, we take the number of terms, which is n, divide it by 2, and then add the first and last. First is 1, and the last is n. And this gives us a general formula for adding the first n natural numbers. You do n divided by 2, and then multiply that by n plus 1. For example, let's just test it for 6. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. If I add up the first six counting numbers, according to this formula, I should just get uh, six halves times uh, six plus one, which is seven. So we get 21 out of this. Let's confirm that. If you add the one and six, that's seven. The two and five is seven, and the three and four is seven. So sure, surely we get three sevens, we get 21. And this concludes our lesson on arithmetic sequences and sums involving arithmetic sequences.